Hey guys, Gandalf0987. Um, just wanted to create this video to talk a little bit about a game that no one ever talks about because it was very forgettable despite the fact that the movie was a really big success. It was a big hit, made a lot of money. It is a great film overall. I remember I saw it in the theaters. So I guess that Activision decided to make a video game based on it. Now, what happened was they got a developer, Treyarch, which everybody knows because they developed the Call of Duty games. And at this time, they weren't maybe as well known. This is 2002, and that's back when the movie came out. Also, the main character is not Tom Cruise, and I think a lot of people didn't like that. I think because he's such a highly paid actor, they couldn't get his likeness in the game because it would have cost them a whole lot of money they didn't have. And so they created this character, which is basically the same character, Anderton, from the film. He's trying to clear his name because if you've ever seen the film, that he's accused of murder because of these characters called the Precogs, which can see the future. And they predict his murder, so then he's out to try and find out why, you know, he's going to murder someone and try to clear his name. But it's a great film. Anyway... This video game has a blonde haired guy. He's actually voiced by Clancy Brown, which you'll know from the Shawshank Redemption. He's voiced all kinds of cartoons. Really terrific actor, really recognizable voice. So, it's not so much the story that hurts this game. I think what hurts it the most is the fact that it's kind of poorly done. There's things about it that they could have put more effort into. And I want you to keep in mind, as I'm playing this, I'm going to probably be talking about more of the positives. Because for me personally, I go back to this game again and again and again and again. And there's a reason for that. It's fun to play. If you've ever played classic beat-em-ups, such as Streets of Rage and such like that, you'll know why they're so much fun and why we enjoy playing them over and over and over again. It's because, well they're fun to play. They're action, they're easy to pick up, easy to play. Minority Report is no different. It's just set in a 3D world. So, if you um, think of it that way, there's probably a lot to like here. Now, the problem is, like I said, there are a lot of flaws in the game. And let me find... I'll show you a good example. Level 1. The difficulty is actually ridiculous because I believe there's easy, normal, and hard. I have to play on easy because the easiest mode is still very difficult. And part of that difficulty stems from the fact that this game is not very easy to play. The way it was designed, it's not... It's not indicative of of fun. I mean the game is fun but there's just problems with it. Now you got all these kind of combat maneuvers which I've already unlocked most of them. When you start out the game you're not going to have all of these. And for the most part they work. I would say 90% of the time they work. Every now and then you'll input the commands and you'll notice it's not doing what you want. Like that, that worked the way it was supposed to. Also you can pick up enemies, you can throw them. Now I'm going to show you basically the gameplay because this is what why the game shines for me and why it's so good. This guy's actually dead and after they die or pass out, whatever you want to call it, you can still pick them up. And picking them up is really key to this game. I'm going to give you some hints as to, to help you enjoy the game if you do play it. Now as far as the graphics go, that glass shattering, I really love it. Really excellent right there. I just love the effect. It looks great. This is an early PS2 game, pretty early. Uh, it's 2002, so people were getting the hang of things. I think there's a lot of anti-aliasing problems. Almost every texture, every pog on this game, it has issues, as you can see, the just the, the edges, they aren't sharp the way they should be. But not a major gripe. Uh, a lot of those environments can be destructible. You can pick up some you can pick up some things. I don't think you can pick up the chairs. The The odd thing is the 
button to pick up someone or to grab them is actually the same as block. You also earn money which basically just helps you get equipment throughout the game. So I'll show you some more enemies here. You can jump. There's jump attacks which is basically boils down to that when he, he'll punch down to the ground. So I won't give you the context. I kind of forget the context of this area for the story. But the basic gist is it's a beat em up. You beat guys up. You do have weapons. You get that famous gun from the game that shoots some kind of blast into the air, uh, similar to a shotgun. Some kind of a force blast or something. There's health scattered throughout the environments. But why this, why this game is so fun to me is that I keep coming back to it again and again because it's, it's just, it's fun to play. It's fun to beat up on guys. There's there's a slight realism, but at the same time, it's unrealistic. They use the ragdoll physics, which, you know, like you see, I just threw them all the way across the room. Very light. When you punch and kick people, they will fly a bit, which is, you know, of course, unrealistic. It's like a movie or something. Some enemies block your kicks and punches. But once you get to know this game and get to know the commands, the controls, the combat maneuvers, everything that you have to do, get to know the environments, how many enemies are on screen, there's actually a lot of strategy and it's really fun to play just because of that. Um, is this game a hidden gem? I don't know if I would call it that. Not quite a gem because there are a lot of problems with the game. Um, there are a lot of good things about it. The loading is fast and quick. Um, the music's, you know, not great. That's probably one of the cons, but it works for what it is. The enemies are okay. They say some stupid things. But like I said, the game is a bit too hard. Now, here in the early levels, it's very easy, but the game ramps up very quickly after just a few levels. You'll have rooftop levels, all kinds of things. So now I want to show you another level that has to do with the jetpack because I think it's really important and... For me, back in the day, I had a demo of this game before I ever played the actual game. And there's a certain level that really turned me on to this game and why it's so... Just felt like a 3D beat-em-up, very open space, it's very fun to play. I'm trying to define which level it is that I'm thinking of. Mall City, Jetpack Escape is probably it. Um, there are secrets on each level. The cutscenes are very corny, corny. They're very short, not very exciting. Um, but once again, you know, I really want to focus on the pros because everyone bashes this game. It actually has a lot going for it when it comes to gameplay. And for me, that's what video games are all about. They're not necessarily about graphics or story or even voice acting or even the characters. They're about gameplay. And when it comes to action gameplay, I feel like this game really delivers. Now you press the jump button twice and you'll hover. You do need fuel for this. The fuel does run out of this eventually. But you find fuel all over the place. Right there, just excellent. I love the jetpack gameplay. It's very good. Um, you break through the windows and all kind of things. You don't want to drop too far because you will get hurt. The enemies with all of their weapons and everything, they really can decrease your life bar quickly. As you can see right now, it's not doing that bad, but this is not a later level. This is kind of a mid-level, easy level. And you can't just grab enemies. You have to knock them out a bit before you can uh, grab them. But the grab is super important when you're playing this game. And that's a tip that you'll want to learn is that this right here is a big deal. Because when you grab them and throw them, for some reason, you actually hurt them more than when you punch and kick them. Now this is actually way more easier than I thought. I think I because I put it on the easy difficulty. However, I'm playing the game right now later in the game, and it's very difficult, and that's even on the easy mode. So the jetpack is just awesome. It's a whole lot of fun. Very easy to control. I don't believe that opens the door. It, you know, and I understand it doesn't look like much. Um, it is old now. But when you recognize it is an early PlayStation 2 game, I think you can get a lot from it. Like I said, it's all about the beat em up gameplay. And, I, you know, some people will say this is lame, this is weak. If you've actually played the game, you learn the surroundings, you learn how it works, you learn the maneuvers, it's actually a whole lot of fun. And I keep coming back to it again and again and again. Um, if you look at the reviews for this game, 
they were not very good. Uh, when you look at Wikipedia, it says they were mixed. They were actually mostly negative. Most people gave it a 4 or 5 out of 10, which I consider pretty low for a video game. And they consider, most people consider games to be awful if they're that low. Um, the fact of the matter is, it's, it's not really a 4 or 5 out of 10 game. It's at least a 7 out of 10 game, and I'll explain why. The levels are huge. They're varied. Now you do have occasional short levels, very short. Sometimes they're even small, and and um, this, there's not a lot of space in them. This level does have a lot of space. There's a lot more to this. If I get to the right room, I have to go through one of these subway hallways and go to the next area. This level is actually quite large. Um, I don't know if that's represented here. Or so, not, but I just had to make a shortcut there. But it is excellent. It is a well-made game. It's a lot of fun. Why do people bash it so much? You know, I'm not really sure. I think that there's a lot wrong with it. I think sometimes the environments do look very bland. There's not a lot to them. As you can see, there's a lot of levels. But keep in mind, our some are very short. Some can be beaten in about 10 minutes. So, Now, level 29, and I'm still on easy, it was actually surprisingly difficult. It was crazy difficult to play. Why that is, I'm not sure. It's just what they ask you to do, it makes sense. But because of the way the programmers designed the game, it's almost difficult. Uh, some people might think it's impossible to do. It's not impossible. I think there's just tricks to it. And after you play it for a few times, you learn that. They want me to protect this door. However, all these enemies just keep coming up over and over and over. So many enemies trying to beat it up. Now, it won't actually open until after a little time of them beating on the doors and everything. But it's still ridiculous that this happens this way. Now, you see how easy it is for me to punch and kick everybody? That's just the way this game is. It's very easy to play, very easy to pick up and play. I think that's one of its big appeals. And these guys are using all these weapons. You get all kinds of weapons in the game, like this one, the machine gun. Which, even then, it see, as you can see, it still takes a while for me to kill these guys. Get the health pack here. They, they they are quick. They run right after you. You know, it's just a lot of fun to play. I can still pick him up even though he's dead and throw him. Keep in mind when you're throwing someone in someone else, that actually hurts them a lot. Even more than punching and kicking. Go figure. So once you figure out all these little nicks about the game, these little things that make it special, you really realize that why it's so fun to play, why it's so special. I mean, I keep coming back to it, like I said, again and again and again, just because it is so exciting when it comes to that. And yes, there are things about it that there's issues. I mean, there's issues with the environments. There's issues with maybe you don't like the control. Maybe you wanted to punch this guy and you punch that guy. It only targets one person at a time. There are moves you can do like this, like this leg kick. Let's see if I can pull it off like that and you can knock out multiple people you can like I said showed you you can throw someone into someone else sorry trying to show you an example of that see and certain people need certain combos to be defeated well, I tried to throw him into him but there's just too much going on see it's kinda of ridiculous how he falls but I'm I'm surrounded right there, but if anyone, if you guys have ever tried this, I mean, I think you know what to expect. There you go, the doors have been, been breached. It's, it's fun. I mean, I highly recommend it. I think you should check it out. It's becoming one of my favorite PS2 games. Is it in my top 25? Most definitely not in my top 25. Is it a lot of fun to play? Oh yeah, it's a lot of fun to play. I prefer this subject over other action games. I think the way they designed it with the level of difficulty it's at, um, the variety of just enemies and levels, I think it's just right for, for someone like me. Um, there's just something very appealing to it. And this doesn't because, it's not because I like the movie. This, mo this game really has hardly anything to do with the movie. It's just a well-made game. They put a lot of effort into it. And there are, there's a lot that they skimped on. You know, like I said, anti-aliasing, big problem. All the corners look awful. All the edges of the polygons look really bad. They could have done much better with the textures. The textures look very muddy. You play a game like Jack and Daxter, 
you can see that's quality right there. But here's a pro. When you fail, you get to try again and the level loads right up again. Um, just give it a try. Check it out. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. I think you'll really enjoy the game. If you're turned off by the graphics, I mean, that is what it is, and I understand that. But when you actually play the game and figure out how everything works and the different moves, you're really going to enjoy this game. Um, all I can do is recommend it. It's so easy to find. It's not an expensive game. It's a cheap, cheap, cheap game. It didn't even sell all that well. Yet you can find copies everywhere. It's on the Xbox. It's on the GameCube. It's for all three consoles. It's great on all the consoles. I think the GameCube runs a little bit smoother. I feel like it does look very similar to the PS2 version though. The loading is probably faster on the Xbox. But the point is, you really got to try this game. Like I said, super inexpensive. It's like the Call of Duty games. They're so cheap because it sold so well. They're everywhere. Uh, Minority Report, very easy game to find. Very inexpensive. Most stores would probably sell it for two or three or four dollars. They would probably never sell it for more than six or seven dollars um, because it's not sought after. People don't like it. But I think if you give this game a chance, you will really like it and you will really enjoy it. If not, that's fine, but I really enjoy it and that's why I had to make this video just to let you guys know that this is an excellent game worthy of your attention. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm signing off. This is a solid 7.5 out of 10 game for me. I'll talk to you later. So this is it. Minority Report Everybody Runs. It is available for the Xbox. This is the PlayStation 2 version. It's on GameCube also. It's rated T for Teen. It's not going to be super violent. I, re I recommend this game. I really do. I would definitely give it a 7.5 out of 10. Like I said, I come back to playing it over and over again for a reason. It's a whole lot of fun to play. You know, the graphics, I mean, they are what they are. The gameplay, I think, is where it shines. There's things about it, they feel a little loose, they feel a little iffy, where you're playing as the character and you're punching and kicking other characters, which are humans. It does feel like there's no weight. There's not a lot of weight to them. But that's part of the fun. You realize the way characters interact. The, you realize your own controls, how you move throughout the game, and then you really start to get used to it. So, once again, this is just me recommending it. You should definitely check it out. It's on all three of the old consoles. GameCube, Xbox, PS2. You're going to really enjoy this one. I promise you. Alright, Gandalf signing out.